Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this puzzle, Frost, by Bondi, by using set equivalence theory. Click on the link below if you want to try this puzzle yourself. And with that, it's solving time. So I've done several set tutorials uh, already. This was a unique puzzle Bondi sent to me. I was looking for something a little bit different in a way to attack it. So remember, in set, what we're looking for, uh, we're basically looking for two different you know, groups of digits, right? We want... Uh, one group that contains three to five of the same candidates. And so let's look on the outer rim here. What do you notice about all the outer rim rows one, nine, and columns one and nine? You probably notice they have all the same digits, one, two, three, and four, right? Okay, so that's likewise, that's, those are all like candidates. You're looking for three to five, the same type of candidate. So one, two, three, and four is four of those, and they're all contained in uh, these two rows, these two columns. So that's four uh, sets of digits one to nine. Now let's look inside the blocks here. Block one, three, seven, and nine, and what's remaining in the white. Well, you notice those are digits five, six, seven, and eight. So what we can do here is cover up blocks one three seven and nine and now we're looking at two different sets the purple and the orange and i'm going to get rid of the overlap of the digits one through nine you got purple and you got orange purple contain predominantly five six seven eight the orange contain one two three four since this row and column overlap like these you know the, the blank ones you know this purple or whatever's in the purple here is in this column we don't care about that they cancel each other out but since there's a row a row and a column coming here we need to add in back in that one the three the one and the three on the corners the reason being is they they cancel out with one you know this one purple uh, set right here, but not with the other set that might be coming across the row. So we got to add back in. And if you look and say how many orange digits there are, there's 16, and how many purple there are, there's 16. That makes sense, right? And so this is a, a, one of the ways of set I wanted to show you. Uh, when you when you do this overlap of the same color, then you'll need to add one of those, one of those back in when you're doing the cancel out. So how many known orange do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. And how many blank purple do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we have any overlaps or any that are same? Nope. If we did, we'd cancel them out. But since we don't, we know that these have to be the digits one, two, three, and four by set equivalence theory. And the reason being is these orange have to be somewhere in the purple. And then we can get rid of all the extras, which is what we'll do right now. Get rid of those. Right, because the one's already here in block one. Now, same thing. How many known purple do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how many unknown orange do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when you have that perfect number, uh, you know, the known or purple equal the unknown orange, uh, then set's going to work really well. You're gonna, cause you're, cause you're gonna be able to say, hey, I can solve all, you know, I can put this in the cells, and this is the only thing that can be in those cells, and usually you end up making a lot of elimination. Set also works for puzzles that contain swordfish uh, rather well, and I can tell you, if you do this one normally, you got at least one swordfish you got to work your way through. But I'm going to show you this method using set equivalence theory. You're not going to have to do anything as complicated as a swordfish to get to solving. All right, so this is what we've plugged in. Now we've got the the, you know, the limited candidates in the orange and the purple. And before I move on and show you how to solve the puzzle, I want to make uh, one quick comment. I have a community tab now. And in that community tab, every day that I am not posting a video, I'm going to put something on my community tab. So you can get some value and come back and see what I'm doing. Uh, and it's going to be Sudoku-related content. On Thursdays, I'm calling it my Thursday throwback. What I'll do is I'm going to highlight or mention something from a previous video uh, that's at least a year old that I liked or that I thought was really good 
And, you know, I might pull out something that, uh, you know, a particular part of Solve or something about the, the video itself that I really like. I got plenty of old Bondi videos. I've done many videos with Bondi puzzles. I'm, I'll probably show one of those really soon. So make sure on Thursdays, even though you're not getting a video from me, come check out my tab. Uh, sometimes I do, you know, polls. I also do, you know, give me a thumbs up if you figure something out. Put something in the comments. Let's grow this community together. All right, move back to the solve. Things we can notice here, and we can do some more eliminations. One to four come across row one. One to four coming up, column nine. So the one to four eliminated these two spots here in block three. So we can get rid of these two, right? Same thing down here. You got a one, two come across row nine, and one, two come across column one. So the ones and twos are limited to these two spots. You can get rid of these fours. All right? Other key thing. Um, you probably notice there's a 5, 8 here and a 5, 8 there. 5, 6, 8 here, and 5, 6, 8 here. And so the, by set equivalence theory, we know purple-wise there's two 8s. Um, and there can only be two 8s in these orange, right? You know, this one and this one. Got to be somewhere here in the orange. And since the 8 is here and here and here and here, uh, limited wise, well, one of the eights has got to be here, one of the eights has got to be here in, in the orange. So we can eliminate an eight from all these other cells that are in here. They, they're not going to appear in there. And this is a little bit easier to see probably because the five eight is a, uh, a naked pair. You know it's going to be limited. But I'm telling you, you know, no other eights here, no other eights up in here. So this cell cannot contain an eight. And that's key. Because now, you know, we can uh, just make some quick marks. One, no two, it could be a three, uh, it could be a, can't be a four, it could be a five, can't be a six, seven, can't be an eight, it could be a nine, for example. So I'll put that in and show you that. Um, other thing I want to show is we can actually do a little bit quick some solving here too. So two, two, means that has to be a two, right? And then fours. Four and four means there's only one spot left for a four right here. And so that's how sets helping us out with the four. And then let's look at the nines real quick. Uh, you got nines coming across here. Nines got to be in one of these two spots. So you can solve this for a nine. So we're, those solves you know, you're kind of able to make anyway. But what you'll see here by putting this nine here and putting this two here, now we have a one, three. Uh, naked pair left and so we'll, we'll fill in that one three naked pair that's going to be key so i want to go back here and talk about the eights and then i'm going to talk about the sevens there's only going to be two eights they got to be one's got to be in one of those two spots and one of the eights in the orange has to be in one of those two spots so we can limit all these other eights that come down here there can't be an eight right there we know that there can't be an eight right here so let's look at this cell right here uh, it can have a one it can have a two it can have a three uh, can't it can have a four can't have a five or a six, can't have a seven, can't have an eight, and it can have a nine. All right, so we'll make that mark right there. Now, we've made the marks across here with the eights and the eights. So let's look at the sevens. Uh, you notice the seven is one of these two spots across row four, and it's one of these two spots across column four. And same thing, there's only two sevens that can be in the orange because we only have two sevens in the purple. So what that means is none of these other cells across here can contain a seven because it has to be in one of those two. All right, so what can we do about that? Well, we can mark these cells that don't contain uh, a seven. So let's look at this one right here first. It could be a one, it could be a two, it could be a three, it can't be a four, it can't be a five, it could be a six. Now we know it can't be a seven, it can't be an eight, it could be a nine. Let's come down here. Uh, we already know that can't be a seven. This one right here won't be able, won't contain a seven either. So this could be a one, can't be a two, could be a three, can't be a four, can't be a five, six, can't be a seven, uh, can't be an eight, and it could be a nine. Okay, now let's come across this way. The seven has to be here, or it has to be here. So we already know that can't contain a seven, that can't contain a seven. This cell right here is not going to contain a seven. Uh, what can it contain? It contain a one. You can two, can contain a three, uh, can't have a four, can't have a five, can't have a six, can't have a seven, can't have an eight or a nine. So that's just going to be a one and a three. And so this is huge. And the reason this is huge 
is now you have a 1, 3, 4 naked triple, right? Since this can't be a 7, that's a 1, 3, 4 naked triple. This is going to help us solve column 8. So we already have the 2, 5, and 6, 1, 3, 4 naked triple. Uh, so we're looking at 7, 8, and 9. This has to be an 8 or 9. This could be uh, 7, 8, or 9. And then down here, you already have the 8, so that can be a 7 or a 9. Okay. Well, let's look over here in column 2. You see a 2, 3, 1, 3, and 1, 2. So we have another naked triple. And so the 1, 2, and 3 are limited to those three spots here in column 2. So you have a 1, 2, 3. You've got a 4, 5, 8. We're looking at a 6, 7, 9. Here's your 6. So this has to be a 7, 9. This right here, you see the 9. So this has to be a 6 or a 7. And then down here, you see the 7. This has to be a 6 or a 9. Okay, and you're probably like going, well, that's great, Timberlake. Now what can we do? Well, believe it or not, we have a W-wing. You are looking at a W-wing, and you may not even know that. Where is it at? I will use different coloring here. W-wing, you have two bi-value cells at the beginning and the end, right? Seven, nine, seven, nine. One of those candidates can see the beginning, and it has a strong link with the same candidate that can see the end point. You remember, because the 7 has to be in this spot or this spot, it has a strong link. That means if this is not a 7, that's a 7. Um, this can see the beginning. This one can see the end. Awesome. So what's that telling you? Um, you know, basically, we can eliminate a 9 from any cell that sees the beginning or the end. And the reason being is that 9's got to be in one of these two spots. And why is that? Because you have a strong here. 9, strong link to the 7, weak to the 7, strong to the 7, weak to the 7, strong to the 9. So either this is a 9 or that's a 9. Which case, this can't be a 9 right here, and that can't be a 9 right there. And if you're not familiar so much with my W-Wing uh, strategies, check out my W-Wing tutorial. It's actually one of my most popular videos on YouTube. Uh, I do stall the video, and my first W-Wing is not until about like 17, 18 minutes in, but it's still a great video. I'll put a link right now. Go check it out. But the point of the W-Wing is that you can eliminate the 9s from those two spots. So we can solve this for a 6, and we can solve that for an 8. And so it's all because of that set equivalence theory, knowing the 7s were limited to two spots there, and the 8s are limited to the two spots there. And now that we solve this 8... We know that the eights of these two spots has to be now in this cell. Cool, huh? Uh, so we solve this six. And so six is six. We can solve that for a six. And I'll get rid of uh, this extra coloring. All right. And then six. Uh, what else can we solve here? Right here, we can solve this for seven. Because now we got the... 6, so we can solve that for a 7, we can solve this for a 9. We can solve that for a 7, we can solve this for a 5, we can solve this for a 9, and you can see how the, the cells are starting to like eliminate, and we can just do some easy solving. Okay, great. All right, so where do we go from here? Uh, 8, 8, 8 in columns, uh, or rows 1 and 2 in column 4, so there's only one spot left for an 8 up here in block 3. So we can solve that for an 8. Uh, and any other 8s? Yep, we got... There's only one spot for an 8 here in block 7, so we can solve that for an 8. Which makes that a 5, makes that an 8. So now we solve those two 8s that we were missing, right? And then with the 7s, using set equivalence theory, we knew there's only two 7s remaining in the orange, so that has to be one of your 7s, and that has to be the other one of your 7s. Cool, huh? Love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And then what's the remaining digit? We got a 5 and a 5, only one 6. I can solve that right away for a 6 using set equivalence theory. Boom. There's your 6. Awesome. All right. And we made a lot of progress on this puzzle. 1, 3, 1, 3 is only one cell remaining here. That's got to be an 8. So we can solve that for an 8. And then let's move on with some more solving. Did I get all the 8s? I think I got all the 8s. Did I get all the 9s? Uh, nope. We got a 9 here in column 2 and 3, so then that could be a 9. You might as well just focus on where we have these, these big restrictions here, right? And then we got one cell remaining here in block 7. See, so those have to be a 1 or a 2, so 
we can mark that for a four, and we can mark this for a nine. And so now you have a nine and a nine, uh, two spots for nine, so can't solve that yet. Eight, sevens, we can look at the sixes. You got a six here in rows one and three, so that has to be a six. And now, since this can't be a nine, this has to be your nine up here. Great, and then we got uh, two spots remaining in block, uh, excuse me, column nine. So looking for a two and a five. I see the five right there, so that's your two. That's your five. And so we have a three, four, naked pair right there. Okay, that's cool. Uh, two, two, you know, we can solve that for a one, and that for a two, which makes this a three, it makes this a one. We can solve this for a three and a two. And so we're at disambiguating those naked triples, which I love to see. Okay. And two, two, and a two there. So now there's only one spot for two here in block two, so we can solve that for a two. Uh, and one spot for two up here in block three, so we can solve that for a two. And we've taken care of almost all the two. Uh, yeah, no, we got all the twos. Nice. Okay, what are we, what's remaining here? Let's look and start solving. So we got a full house coming up, column three. Only one spot left. It's got to be a five. So we can mark that for five. And then I'm going to look here. There's only two cells remaining here. One's got to be a four. One's got to be a seven. Here's your seven. So seven in row two and a four in row three. Which means we can solve this for one, that for a four, this for a three, that for a four. And now we've solved everything in the orange in the in the purple. So we got and taken care of all our set equivalence theory cells. So I will remove the coloring now as we get near the end. Uh, since we've already made these marks, we know there's only one cell remaining. That has to be a nine. That has to be a four. That has to be a five. It's got to be a three. Uh, something else I haven't mentioned to you. Uh, we'll look at this full house first. I'll solve that. There's going to be, it's got to be a seven, right? The only thing remaining is I did a very similar solve, another puzzle on uh, unchecking Sudoku and puzzles. Go check it out. Now you do another puzzle by Bondi, and it's really neat because it, it uses a set equivalence theory, very similar set setup, but it used some different advanced strategies to make some progress. I thought it was super cool. Uh, go check that out. I'll put a link at the end of this video here. So let's finish out strong here. We are missing a one here in block six. We can see the one right there in row five. So that's got to be your one. That's got to be your five. And then I'll look five, five. This has got to be your five right there. Um, so I'm always going to go to the cross hatching. Five, five, five. Good spot there. We got two spots remaining. We're looking for a three and we're looking for a six. I got the six right there. So that's got to be your three. That's got to be your six. And there's no six here in block eight. So I'll mark that for a six. I already marked that three. So that's got to be your three. And this has got to be your one. One, one. Only one spot left for one there. We got two spots remaining. What are those two spots? It's got to be a three and a nine. I see the three right there. So that's your nine and that's your three. Check out these other videos. To see some more cool puzzles and solving strategies. Thank you, Bondi, for letting me feature your puzzle on my channel. Uh, I really enjoy it. If you want to further support Smart Hobbies by buying me a coffee, click on the link below. I'd appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching.